And we're back. We're chapter 6 of Brachos, Lamed Vav Amar Aleph, a few lines from the top. Himcha v'chidichite Rav Yehuda Amar Bore Priyadama v'Rav Nachman Amar Shekol Nebilvur. If someone is eating plain wheat flour, what, bless, what blessing does he say? Rav Yehuda says, whenever I ask you a question, you're supposed to say, it's in my clothes. Oh, it's in my clothes. Okay. okay. It's a different dispute. If one was eating plain wheat flour, what's the bracha? Machlokas. Rav Yehuda says, creates the fruit of the ground. Rav Nachman says, by whose word all things came to be. Um, the the halacha the halacha the is shakol niyeh If you're eating wheat flour, you say shakol niyeh b'tvaro. Like if it's finely ground or only partially ground. You're eating flour. Uh, it's not Bore Minim as Like you might think it's Bore uh, Priha Adama, Rav Yehuda said Bore Priha Adama, from the of the ground. You might say it's Mizonot because it's wheat. No. Rav Nachman won in this argument and it's um, the whole following argument is based on Rav Nachman's opinion. That wheat flour is actually shahako by whose word all things came to be. Amar le Rav le Rav Nachman lo tiflog ale de Rav Yehuda de Rav Yochanan u'shmul kaime kavate. Rav said to Rav Nachman, don't disagree with Rav Yehuda as Rav Yochanan and Shmuel hodin agree with him. To Amar Rav Yehuda Amar Shmuel, because Rav Yehuda said in the name of Shmuel, Kein Amar Rabbi Yitzchak Amar Rabbi Yochanan, and similarly Rabbi Yitzchak said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, so he has a lot of uh, rabbis to back up his words here. Shem and Zayed Mevarchin Ela Borei Preetz, olive oil. You say, blessed is the fruit of the tree. Alma Af Al Gav De Ishtane. Therefore, even though it had changed form from what from an olive from the tree into an oil still you say from blessed is the fruit of the tree on the olive oil alma therefore we transfer that to the wheat to the flour that um, say even if, here too even though the wheat changed into flour the blessing remains as it was because the wheat came from the ground Midame, is that comparable? Late le iluya acharina. The olive oil has no potential for any additional enhancement. Iluya, went making better. Hacha it le iluya acharina fat. What's fat? Fat swaller. Fat. Fat, oh yeah, bread. Right, yeah. Itle iluya acharina the fat. The fat. It has another additional enhancement that wheat flour can be made into bread. So, so what? Um, <coughs> what do we just say? Wheat flour. Olive oil. No, the olive oil. Oh, if you have, there's a principle that if it can change, it can be made into a better substance. Yeah. That the bracha would change. Uh-huh. So, all of, okay, so it gets, because the olive turns into the oil, there's no nowhere further that it can go, so it's still bore priya etz. If you say, oh, that's, that's, if that's true for olive oil, if you said bore, if it's true, and we, I know we don't, Practically speaking, we don't. But if it were true, theoretically, that we say bore priya etz on olive oil, right? Then we transfer that to the wheat flour, and we say wheat flour is also something that trans that changed form from the wheat into the flour. Mm-hmm. So it should say, retain the original blessing, right? What was Rabbi Yehuda's opinion again? Mm-hmm. Bore priya dama. It should be bore priya dama like Rabbi Yehuda said. 
not only that a million rabbis agreed with him, or the ones I mentioned before at least, uh, also because it makes sense that they should it should be the same law as the as the the olive and the olive oil. Started off grape free it's, it's olive oil, still grape free it's Started off as grape free adama from the wheat flour, it's still grape free adama from the sorry from the wheat in the ground. It's when it's the flour, it's still grape free adama. No. And that's not true because that's not the last stage. You don't have to leave it as wheat. The oil, the oil is the finished product. You put it in the salad, whatever. Um, you can cook the oil in a food. Okay, but that's not exactly changing it. The way it is. Yeah, sure. No, we can put it in the video. So if you, know, you don't you mind, there's like a million the people hearing it. What? You know the horn story. Was yeah, yeah. Right? So she calls them up uh, at dinner time. Okay, apparently Natalie ordered corn schnitzels. And then instead of just eating corn schnitzels, she also had sushi. So the question is, what bracha is she going to be saying on the sushi? She already had the corn schnitzels. Obviously, she's going to have to say another bracha because she didn't think that she was going to have... Okay, um, back to this uh, fascinating discussion of Talmudic logic. Simply fascinating. Um, wheat flour, on the other hand, is used to bake bread, right? So flour is a raw material which neither the blessing over the wheat nor the blessing of the bread is appropriate. Right? It's flour. You can't say bore of mozi lechem in It's not bread yet. Um, so because we because there's no blessing that seems to be appropriate, you just have to say by default shekol me abu. Is it really true that when there's no potential for additional, an additional enhancement, one does not recite who creates the fruit of the ground, rather one recites by whose word all things came to be? How could you say that? Because we know, said, in the name of Marbi Matana and Shmuel, Akra Chaya Bakimcha Dasare Mavarchina Dalea Shekol Nebidvaro. On a raw gourd and over barley flour, one recites the blessing by whose word all things came to be. My love, Dechite Bore Predama. We're talking about a raw gourd and a barley flour. Shekol Nebidvaro. Right? My love, dechite bore priyadama. Is that not to say that over wheat flour one says bore priyadama? In other words, over barley flour, which people don't typically eat, it's appropriate to say shakal. But wheat flour, um, it came from the ground. Because we have other things that came from the ground and are also made into other things. A raw gourd is not finished. Barley flour is not finished. Right? Rabbi Zara said you say Shehakolam. Wait a second, that doesn't make sense, does it? Thank you. Gemara asks, when something has no uh, no possibility for additional enhancement, one does not recite Perhaps one does not recite Bore Priya Dhamma, but rather Shehakol. We just, we just tried to prove that you say Shehakol and wheat flour. Why? Because it has a possibility for additional enhancement. Right. Right. But we have other, but when it has, you could say, when it has no potential for additional enhancement, 
one does not recite Bray Priyadama, but rather Shea Kol. It's even there are even there are even cases where there's no possibility to enhance the Shea Kol. It doesn't need a possibility to be enhanced, like with the wheat flour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the basis on, on this statement that Rabbi Zera received. Raw garden barley flour, and a shackle. Is that enough to say that over wheat flour you say Bari Priyadama? Over barley flour, people don't typically eat, then it's appropriate to say shackle. On wheat flour, it's appropriate to say Bari Priyadama, because we eat it more, perhaps. This argument is rejected. No, no. Uh, on wheat flour, a person also recites shakol. The Gemara asks, then let the sages teach us that this halacha applies with regard to wheat flour and all the more so regarding barley flour. The Gemara responds, it was necessary to teach us that one has to say a blessing even before the barley flour. Had the sages taught us that this halacha with regard to wheat, it would have said this applies only with regard to wheat flour. But over barley flour, let one not recite a blessing at all. Did you get that? I didn't get it at all. What was the halakha that the sages just taught? That over, okay, we have wheat flour and barley flour. Wheat flour, mm-hmm. they're saying shahakol. Why did they say shahakol for wheat flour? Because it could be made into something better. If it has a possibility for additional enhancement, um, but it's not that thing yet, then it's in the middle stage where it's not a dama coming from the ground, and it's not a motzlechem in it's not bread yet, it's flour. So you can't say either the first one or the next one. So you say shakol, right? Uh-huh. Because that it makes sense. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Because, that makes because sense. it could be transformed yeah. upwards. Okay, good. Question is, this, there's another additional factor. People don't do. People eat wheat flour. They don't typically eat barley flour. What's the law for okay. barley flour? People don't eat any flour, just this flour. Yeah. Okay, uh, kids, sometimes kids... Well, kids will eat dirt also. Yeah, they can't learn from kids. We have a teaching from Rabbi Zara that says over oh, barley flour, and people don't even eat that, they say shakol. Wheat flour, when people eat it more, you, it's, you, they say perhaps you should say bari priyadama because it's something that's eaten more. So, the wheat barley flour, because people don't usually eat barley flour, they don't say a blessing at all. Uh, So, so, okay, there's a possibility here. Let the sages say that the halacha applies with regard to wheat flour, meaning saying shakol. And all the more so it should apply to barley flour, because we don't know what to do with the barley. It's not, it's not, it's not, nishteher nishtehent. You know this expression? Not here, not there. So, it's not, it's not coming out of the ground, and it's not bread yet. It's not a finished food yet, with the barley. So, You, what, for what reason would it be unnecessary to teach us 
that you have to recite a blessing for barley flour. Why? Because um, all the more so. It's something that's eaten, but it's a food, and it's eaten, but people don't typically eat it. It's a shahapu. That's the idea. Yeah. Like barley, barley flour. I so in that, in that, sorry? I, I once asked her, jokingly asked a reform rabbi, what he says over trait. He says shahapu. Makes sense for a reform rabbi. Uh, I think we learn a lot that if, it's, if somebody's eating a tray of food, they don't say a bracha at all. Oh, no, no, no. I believe. Because uh, when it's time, he's eating it for his health. Um, you know, I can't bless God for a forbidden food. However, on Yom Kippur, if somebody's eating on Yom Kippur, they say a bracha. No, it's not forbidden. You're allowed to eat uh, yeah. like a tablespoon. What if, I know, but what if somebody is decides, God forbid, he says, I'm going to break Yom Kippur. I'm going to eat a Yom Kippur. Should he say a bracha or not? There's no reason for him yeah, to break it. Yeah, but if you're not allowed to say forbidden things, I don't know. if you're not allowed to eat forbidden foods. I have to check it out. Okay, so, um, the logic here is tricky. I don't have enough IQ points to... Yesh mina dechite, have amina hanu mina dechite. But the sages taught us... Okay, you might have, might think it was unnecessary to say a blessing even before eating barley flour, because we can understand it from the wheat flour. It's something that's not normally eaten, and it's not here nor there, so... It's, um, so either you don't say a blessing on it, was there an opinion not to say a blessing on it at all? Did I say something like that? Okay, so it must be The, the, the position was that it was unnecessary to say that you need a blessing over barley flour because it's something that's not normally eaten. So it's it, um, and it could be compared to the wheat flour. No, it's actually necessary to teach that you have to say a blessing over the barley flour. Why? Have the sages taught us this halakh with regard to wheat? I would have said it applies only with regard to wheat. But Rabbi Zera said that Rabbi Matana said that Shmuel said that on a raw gourd, a raw gourd, and barley flour, you say a bracha shakol. And he goes along and saying, so if it's true for the for the raw gourd and the barley flour, it's shakol. And we, what do we say over the wheat flour? Say, Bore Pri Haldama. Because barley you typically don't eat, but wheat flour people are more often eating. So people eat just wheat flour. I guess if you can make pancakes, but it's not really. That's again, that's turning it into Bore Mini mm-hmm. Or it's transforming it. The Gemara asks, then let the sages teach the halacha applies with regard to wheat flour. Which halacha? Meaning, Barepri Adama. We just learned um, a, a statement from the rabbis here that barley flour, shakol, wheat, Barepri Adama. Okay? And then it, the Gemara rejects this and says, no, um, wheat flour, shehakol, just like the barley and the gourd. Two different opinions. Okay. Can you say it, can I say it to somebody again? 
One opinion is over raw gourd and barley flour, shahako. Over wheat flour, bore priyadam. Okay? That's, that's, we call that Rebbe Zerah. Mm -hmm. Rebbe Zerah is rejected, saying, no, the shahakol is also applying to wheat. You don't say bore priyadam on wheat, but rather shahakol. Two different opinions. The Gemara says, if that's true, if you, if, if all three of them is shahakol, right, then, then say that, that it's shahakol is the bracha for the wheat flour, and all the more so for the barley flour, because they're both in the same, not, not only they're similar, but because barley flour is less common to eat. No, the Gemara responds to what was just said, saying, no, hold on. Say a blessing even before barley fell. Why? And the sages taught us this luck with regard to wheat. I would have said it applies only to wheat flour. About the sare lo levarech ale klal, but don't say any bracha over barley flour. If they taught the halacha, in other words, if you said shakol, it applies to wheat flour, then don't say anything over barley flour because it's not normally eaten. Kamash mm -hmm. that's but we learned that that's not true because we know we. Um, so. Because this halacha was not with, just with regard to wheat; it was, it was uh, with regard to raw gourd and barley flour, shakol, and wheat had, had another bracha for them. Let's keep going, anyhow. Migarami melech is it is 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 barley flour inferior to, to salt or, or zamit? Zamit is an interesting word. Zamit is salt water, from the Greek zomos, and soup or bran. Mm -hmm. So, Omer Shehako. Uh, the ala zamit and salt water say Shehako ni vidro. Isterik salt data chamira melech zamit avid enash the shade lefuma. With, um, as we learned in the Mishnah, it's over salt water, one says Sharkol. So, all the more so, Sharkol should be recited over barley flour because people would eat barley flour more often than salt water. If we have a Mishnah that teaches there's a brach over salt water, then obviously you're going to say a brach over barley flour. Right? This is questions rejected. No. Salkadata Chamina. Melech v'zamit, avid inish d'shadeh l'fuma. Might it enter your mind to say that although one occasionally places salt or salt water into his mouth, barley flour, which is damaging to one who eats it and causes intestinal worms, about kimcha desare, who will v'kashe l'kuk yayne. Barley flour, because it could cause kuk yayne, uh -huh. intestinal worms. So, lo levarech aleklau. One shouldn't say any blessing over barley flowers because it's damaging. Kamash malan. Therefore, it's necessary to teach us this whole thing. Kevan de itle han amine by baruch. Because there is some sort of benefit from and pleasure from eating the barley flower, then it would need a blessing, even though it has the risk of the the kukyane. In other words, even if something is damaging, but no, the, before they said that if something's damaging, you don't say a Yeah, Here they're saying that you do. They, they they choose the the benefit, the enjoyment somebody has of it over over the possibility of the damage. Um, people could get damage from drinking alcohol too, but they still say a right? It's poison, right? And we'll end with the secret of the Torah: Why is alcohol poison? Ra'al. Rish ayin lamet means poison, right? Yeah. You add it up, and how much do you get to? 300. Um, 
Elohim, you add up the letters and also get 300. Aleph, Lamed, Pei, Lamed, Mandalat, etc. If you add it up, you get 100. So, um, the din, the whole point of drinking is to sweeten the judgments of the, of the Rao and transforming it into Simcha, Mitzvot, whatever. Is it for Shabbos? Mm-hmm. In the Seychelles.